Hello, engineering fam. I'm your host, the Elevated Engineer. Welcome to another episode of Get On Code. In this episode, we'll be creating Python using Anaconda to implement Shor's algorithm, all on QuizKit Quantum Computing SDK. So, ready? Let's go. For this tutorial, we're going to do something a little different. I'm not necessarily going to show you as much coding as I am going to be explaining the idea of Shor's algorithm. Basically, we're going to take a little bit of code, implement Shor's algorithm on a quantum computer SDK um, using KISKit, of course, and some Python code. So, what is uh, Shor's algorithm? It's a quantum algorithm. In this case, uh, we're gonna be using it for factorization. We have a small number, uh, 21, as you can see, uh, all of the code for the most part, except for the import statements are um, commented out. So this code is kind of broken down into the two different parts. The classical part, it reduces the factorization to a problem and it finds the period of the function, basically the end of the function. Um, this is, going to be done classically um, using my computer and we're going to be simulating a quantum computer. Uh, the quantum part, which is the second part, uh, uses the quantum computer to find uh, the actual period. And it uses this uh, using a QFT, which is a quantum Fourier transform. Um, that's actually something I might do another video on explaining not only the QFT, but the, uh, the DFT, which is, the, which is actually the, the discrete Fourier transform. Basically, it's a sampling algorithm, but I think that's the topic for another day. So let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, first of all, we're going to be using our, our, our import statements, right? So... Um, uh, KISKIT comes with a few different import statements that we're going to be using. Uh, IBMQ, the quantum misses, and of course, Shor's algorithm, which is actually a built-in uh, function for KISKIT. All right. So the first thing you'll notice is that you see this long IBMQ.enable account. Um, this number is your actual API token. Uh, this token right here is how you will actually access uh, your uh, account information with IBMQ. Uh, I will post the link to this uh, so that you can get your, uh, your token all set up. Obviously, you know, this is one that I'm going to be changing, but just for the sake of this tutorial, uh, I am going to be using this very long hash uh, code right here. So it's a salted um, is a salted uh, token. Uh, salted meaning it is encrypted. Okay, so next we're gonna set up our provider. We're gonna use the IBMQ that get provider. And again, that's IBMQ's built-in uh, Git function. And then we're going to set up our backend, and we're going to be using the IBMQ QASM simulator, which is built-in. You can actually do a little more research on this. There are a bunch of simulators that are available, uh, but this is just the one we're using right now because it's easy. All right, so. Okay, so let's break this down in, into a few different steps. Okay, so now that we have our backend set up, uh, we want to let the, the user know that Shor's algorithm is run. So we got a, a few uh, print statements unless we know, uh, lets us know that the, that the uh, quantum is executing, right? So for this uh, particular study, we're going to break this break it down. So we're going to be picking a random number such that A is less than N, okay? With N meaning our uh, number that we're going to be factoring. 
Okay, so we're going to use that to compute the, the greatest common divisor, aka the GCD, of our n, right? If the greatest, greatest common factor does not equal 1, then that tells us that the quantum system has found a factor of n. Otherwise, the quantum circuit uses the QFT, which is a, the quantum uh, Fourier transform. Um, once it uses the quantum Fourier transform, if the period or the time period is odd, then it goes back to the first step. So if it's not, if it doesn't have any prime numbers, or if it isn't prime, it goes back and starts all over. Right? Otherwise, the system tells us we found our factors of n. Okay? So, n, in this case, is 21. Okay? And we're creating a variable called factors. And this is a function that's as it's actually going to be running Shor's algorithm. We're implementing um, and, and calling uh, the, the function Shor. Right? So, the result is we're going to factor it and run this particular in, uh, uh, instance, right? Now, I set the shots to be four. You can set, set it to any uh, uh, number. It's going, it's, that means it's going to uh, uh, do it four different times. Um, it's actually, you know, faster to do it less amount of times, but I just do it just for the sampling rate. Right, and then it's going to to not skip the actual validation, which means it will not finish uh, um, the program without validating it. that is correct. Right, and the results we're going to just put it in a little array, and we're going to get the factors. Right now, as you can see, it already says uh, we're going to skip ahead a little bit. It already says three and seven because I, I actually ran it. Um, so. Let's just get all these out. We're going to print the result and then we're going to print. Uh, we're going to close the program by pressing any key. And then we're going to input that key and the whole thing is going to close. So let's go ahead and close this really quick. Right now, everything is all set up. Okay. Already. So what we're going to do is we're going to run this and it's going to take maybe a minute or so to run so let's go ahead and try to uh, start this first one keep in mind um every number has to be above one and it has to be odd now before i show you let's change that to 20 it's an even number and it's going to give us an error right the input needs to be an odd integer greater than one so we're going to do 21, right? And now we're going to do the prime factorization of this number. Now, this is something that's going to be key. It may work the first time, but it may not. So what do I mean? Um, when we run this, there's something that's going to happen. Because we're manipulating quantum states um, and um, entanglement, of our quantum qubits we're we're kind of changing the entire quantum environment which means everything breaks down in other words that's a fancy way of saying everything breaks down so what we are going to do is we're going to run this and we're going to see if it's going to work now it may not work or it may work there's actually a algorithm to determine the percentage uh of time oops well, we got to Start all over. Hold on. Stop this. Start all over. All right. So even when I run it again, it says uh, uh, IBM Quantum Experience Count is already used for this session. Basically, this API token is already I've already uh, used. I'm using it right now, so I can't. This it's a safety protocol. So let's go ahead and run this one again. Right. So it's going to run and it's going to take a little minute. 
but while it's running, um, I want people to notice that one, how long it takes because of, of the classical hardware versus the amount of qubits that I'm able to actually access, which I'm actually not sure how much qubits are being stabilized, but as you can see, it prints out the prime uh, factorization, right? So it prints out the prime numbers of 21, three and seven, all right? So let's run it again because eventually it's going to, a decoherence is going to happen and it's going to fail. So it, it runs again. Okay. And it worked that time too. Let's try a different number. Let's do 27. Three. It actually did that one pretty fast. <laughs> 29. You gotta stop it again. The decoherence is starting to affect it, right? So you gotta restart the environment again and let it go again. There it goes. You see how it failed and it took a long time? That's because decoherence is becoming more and more uh, prevalent the more we use it. Because the environment is becoming more and more unstable. Now, this brings me to uh, my point. So, I can push this number up to a really high number, right? But it's going to take even longer to factor. And the more I run this on this environment, the less likely it is to be um, uh, to execute properly, right? So even though I can I can run this again, and we're going to do that this next time, it may work, it may not work, and that's where we start to get to the inherent weaknesses uh, of this. Um, of quantum computing, essentially. Uh, decoherence. And here's the problem that many in the industry is facing. See, it's still not working. See, look, it says executing and it does not print out the prime numbers, right? So you can try it again, but it did process it faster. That's what I want people to know is, even though it didn't print out the correct numbers, uh, correct results, I should say. It printed, uh, it, it executed faster. It also failed faster, right? You see how it's actually executing faster and faster? Eventually, it's going to work, but see, this is a third time I ran it. This could be a fourth time. I don't think it would take me more than five times for it to start working again. Could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it won't. But it is actually executing still faster and faster whereas that first time took it took a maybe two minutes all right we're at 29 still trying to get it to work still not working let's go back down to 21 nope don't worry. It's it's pretty much it's pretty much lost all of its coherent coherence at this point. Here it goes. Okay, so it's it's achieved coherence once again. But as you can see, how unstable this is. It's it's a very unstable um, algorithm, and thus we have run into the problem of quantum computing. All right, so let's quit that, right? So even though it does work, it's not reliable enough and the qubits aren't stable enough yet uh, because of the algorithm, because decoherence is always prevalent. It's always around the corner, right? So stuff is going to fall apart the more you manipulate the quantum environment, the more stuff 
is likely to fall apart. <laughs> and, that's, and that's the problem with quantum computing. So why is Shor's algorithm so useful if it's so unstable? Well, being able to, to determine a prime factorization of odd numbers is how hackers break codes. It's also how cybersecurity professionals reinforce security. Think about this. The tougher it is to crack numbers, the tougher it is to break systems. So in this episode of Get On Code, we learned a few things. One, we learned how to implement Shor's algorithm. Two, we learn why Shor's algorithm is so important. And three, we learn that Shor's algorithm causes instability and decoherence in qubits and a quantum entangled system. And it's also very computationally expensive. So that's it, engineering fam. Drop a like, a comment, and a subscribe if you love the content I'm bringing. I know I love making it. Now, Go make something cool!